Today, we're going to learn about photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a process during which plants make their own food. During this process, plants transform water, sunlight, and carbon dioxide into oxygen. The photosynthesis cycle starts with plants absorbing water and mineral salts from the soil through their roots. This fluid mixture is called raw sap. Raw sap flows up the roots to the stem and travels through the rest of the plant to the leaves with the help of woody transport tissues called xylem. Carbon dioxide is absorbed through tiny pores called stomata. And right here in the leaves is where photosynthesis actually takes place. Leaf cells are made up by chloroplasts which contain a pigment called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll gives plants their green color. Chloroplasts capture light energy. Photosynthesis involves sunlight, raw sap, and carbon dioxide. During photosynthesis, raw sap becomes elaborated sap, and living tissues called phloem spread elaborated sap to the rest of the plant. This is when oxygen is released. Keep in mind that photosynthesis happens only during the day because plants need the sunlight. Don't confuse respiration with photosynthesis. Plants breathe during day and night. They absorb oxygen and release carbon dioxide. Plants are really important for the planet. They are the backbone of life on Earth. Thanks to them, we breathe clean air because plants purify it. So now you know that you shouldn't forget to respect and look after them. Today, we're going to learn about the parts of the plant. Their roots. Their roots lie below the surface of the soil. They hold the plant together and they absorb water and mineral salts. The stem. The stem holds up the plant. It also brings water and food straight from the roots to the rest of the plant. Green stems carry the nutrients during photosynthesis. Plant stems can grow into branches. Green stems are soft and flexible. Woody stems are hard and rigid. They are called trunks. Trees have trunks. The leaves. Leaves are green because of a pigment called chlorophyll and they're attached to the stem. Photosynthesis happens in the leaves, which also help the plant breathe. Leaves differ in blade and form. In autumn, light is scarce. Chlorophyll levels drop down and leaves turn yellow or brown. Leaves are made up of two parts, the petiole and the blade. The blade. This is the flat part of the leaf, which has many green food-making cells. The petiole. The petiole attaches the leaf blade to the stem. The flower. Flowering plants are also known as angiosperms. Flowers are the reproductive structures of the plant. All fruits come from flowers. Flowers contain seeds. Hey, nature-loving friends! Have you ever wondered why some plants have flowers and others don't? Come with me and let's find out! We can classify plants into two types. Non-flowering plants called cryptogams and flowering plants called phanerogams. I'll tell you about both of them in more detail. We'll start by talking about cryptogam plants. That means non-flowering plants. Their main characteristic is that we cannot distinguish the components that are part of them. That is, the root, stem, and leaves are not very well developed. They reproduce asexually by means of spores. Spores are reproductive cells that do not need to be fertilized by another plant. Some examples of cryptogams are mosses and ferns. 
Now we'll talk about Phanerogam plants. That means flowering plants. These plants usually reproduce sexually, which means that they require the joining of a female and a male reproductive cell. These types of plants always reproduce by seeds. But what exactly are seeds? Seeds are small pieces of material that contain the embryo used to create a new plant. There are two types of phanerogams, gymnosperms and angiosperms. Gymnosperm plants have rather unnoticeable flowers, like those of a fir or pine tree. The seeds are arranged on both sides of an axis, like this pine cone. Perhaps you've seen them in parks and forests. In the case of angiosperm plants, the seeds are found inside the fruits during the maturation process. These plants' flowers are showy and eye-catching, just like those of an almond tree. Look at how beautiful they are! What a great time we had! Together, we've learned which plants are flowering and non-flowering. Do you think you'll be able to recognize the different plant types the next time you see them? Until next time! We've learned so much in just one video. Did you know there are many more videos? Imagine how much you could learn. Subscribe to the Smile and Learn educational channel to learn and have fun at the same time.